So I think I just got scammed. I really, 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 really want to give this person the benefit of the doubt because that's just in my nature. However, I'm like 99% sure I just got scammed and it does not feel good at all. <laughs> so instead of this video being a whole exposing video talking about the situation or throwing myself a pity party, I thought I would share with you guys the lessons that I learned dealing with people on Twitter and share some tips of how to spot out those scams and how to avoid them. I know I made a video similar to this before, but now that I have some experience on hand, I'm gonna share some extra tips with you. So let's get right on into it. And before I get started, I do not wanna bash the Twitter UGC community. I am always on scrolling through the feed, though I might not be posting all the time, which again, still working on. I feel like there are still some legitimate creators out there and people who are still posting legitimate UGC projects. I mean, personally for me, I scored some really good projects through Twitter and I still have an amazing relationship with them and I'm still working on them with projects here and there. So I don't wanna like completely bash it. However, in the last few weeks, there have been brands and they have been agencies that have been exposed for either posting fake deals or just overhyping their services so much where it actually doesn't drive results. So the first tip I have is if you're scrolling on hashtag UGC opportunities and you're starting to see the same like project description being posted over and over throughout separate accounts, it's most likely a scam. Unfortunately, there's like some like fake agencies out there that are just trying to get likes and followers and retweets for some odd reason, even though they don't even have the opportunity at hand, they will still post these opportunities because a lot of the times to get involved, you have to retweet and DM and comment your portfolio. You're like, you have to take all of these steps in order to apply for this project, which is ridiculous. So instead of that, you could definitely comment your portfolio. I don't think that hurts, but I have stopped retweeting opportunities now and just DMing the person who made that tweet, send them my portfolio, say how I'm interested in working with them. And a lot of times they'll either respond or if they ghost you, it's most likely not like super legitimate or maybe they already filled the position. Again, giving the benefit of the doubt. Or they will also send you a form to actually fill out because that's kind of what they're doing is they're gathering creators that are interested in joining the agencies and maybe their agencies are hosting projects. So maybe if you're not fit for the opportunity, they'll send you a form to fill out so you can be part of their whole creator circle. But one thing I would cut out is wasting the energy of retweeting all of these opportunities and liking them and commenting them. Just simply DM them if you're actually like interested in it. If they're active in the community and if they are followed by reputable creators, which we'll get into in a second, then definitely like comment your portfolio, maybe even DM them, maybe even follow them and actually connect through them legitimately. One quick thing I will mention is if a person is over promoting their services or their product all over Twitter or even just any other social media platform, I would say that's a red flag. Like if it's every single tweet, they're just promoting, promoting, promoting. I would say that's a major red flag. And also if you are interested in the service, be sure you ask a ton of questions and you ask for actual proof of the services being successful to other creators. So like I just mentioned a second ago, reliable creators. So I have a few in mind that I follow on Twitter. I'm gonna shout them out really quick. I'll put their Twitters linked down below, but follow some reliable creators. Sometimes they're working with huge agencies and maybe they're the ones that are posting the UGC opportunities as well. Or they have services that can actually help you with your UGC journey if you're just getting started. Definitely get connected with these reliable creators. And one thing that I noticed between all these creators is they are active on various different platforms. They're active on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, maybe even LinkedIn. Like they are very reputable. They're always active in posting and giving value in various channels. Like for me, for example, I post stuff on YouTube, um, a little bit on Twitter and a little bit coming soon on TikTok. So I would say I'm a reputable creator because I've actually been creating content and I share my value. I feel like I'm very reputable. So some of my favorite creators that I follow, not just on Twitter, but on TikTok and Instagram as well is Sean, Emma, Chelsea, UGC Her, Carson, and Maddie. Those are some legitimate people. Definitely give them a follow. So those are some simple ways that you can find opportunities legitimately. Now let's talk about when you get an inquiry 
to do a UGC project. Let's just say you commented your portfolio on a tweet and now they're reaching out to you. Never be afraid to ask as many questions as you can on a project. Ask for usage rights, ask for deliverables, ask for deadlines, ask for pay, like ask as many questions as you want to understand this project. Don't think that you're annoying or you're just being a pest if you're asking all these questions, especially if they're giving you vague information already. Where's the creative brief? When's the product being shipped? All these questions, they are valid and they're legitimate. And if you want to, ask to hop on a Zoom call, especially if they're an agency owner or someone part of an agency, they're supposed to be taking on calls to talk with brands and creators. So it's not like out of the blue or out of the ordinary if you ask to do a Zoom call, just even like a quick like 10, 15 minute call. Not that big of a deal, you get your questions answered. And also the last thing I wanna mention that I, honestly haven't really been doing myself because I always rely on the brands to send me the contract. If you're working with someone on Twitter and you just make the deal right there through the DM, make sure you send a clear, concise contract. It doesn't have to be anything like super crazy. Here are some things that you should be adding in your contract. Let me know down in the comments below if you want a video about creating a contract and stuff because I know that stuff can be kind of hard. Obviously this is not legal advice at all. This whole video is just for entertainment and legal purposes, but here are some of the things that you should be listing in your contract. List of deliverables. How many pieces of content are you making? Is it organic or is it paid advertising videos? Deadline of the content. Is it two weeks after the product is delivered to you or is it to a specific date? Make sure you get that question answered and written in your contract. Compensation and deadline of being fully compensated. Sometimes people negotiate, you know, 50% up front, 50% after the project is done, full price before the project is even done, or full price right after the project is done. Make sure you communicate that with the person that you're working with and add that in the contract. Usage rights if negotiated, communication app. So if you're gonna be communicating strictly through Twitter, put that in your contract or even email, put that in your contract. So then they know that there's some sort of accountability that you are gonna be communicating about this product through a certain app or through email or whatever. So then there's no way of like ghosting and being like, oh, I didn't know that she was gonna email me back. Like for some reason, I don't know. I just feel like you should just add that in there. And then termination rights, just like with the communication apps, this kind of helps with the whole like ghosting situation after you send in your your project and then you get no feedback and no compensation super weird so make sure that's clear in your contract so hopefully this quick video helped a little bit about how to navigate the UGC Twitter world if you enjoy these types of videos subscribe give this video a thumbs up you know what to do with that being said I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in my next video really soon bye